Jeffrey Dirksen's uh, uh, paper is on is entitled Love in Response to the Other, Frankfurt and Recur on Love and Responsibility. Jeffrey is a PhD student at the University of Antwerp, uh, and uh, he works um, uh, 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 engaging recurs engagement <clears throat> with the analytic tradition, Peter Strawson and Harry Frankfurt, on the issues of moral responsibility and Frankfurt's idea of love. And uh, so we'll turn it over to uh, Jeffrey. Okay, thank you. Um, in my presentation, I want to make a comparison between recurs' uh, hermeneutical approach on love and that of the contemporary analytical philosopher Harry Frankfurt. Um, as he understands it in uh, the reasons of love, necessity, volition, and love, and the importance of what we care about, which are the most important texts of Harry Frankfurt on the issue of love. I want to make this comparison um, because of um, I want to raise the question about the relation between love and moral responsibility and morality in general, um, which I want to pose as uh, the question whether this is a relation of exclusion in the sense that love would be a personal relationship that excludes that of morality that then would be a relation of the common interests. So let me, to, on, to raise this question, I have uh, divided my presentation into three parts. In the first part, I would like to say a little bit about why I make this comparison between Frankfurt and recur, because there is not really a dialogue between them, and how it raises the question between love and responsibility. Secondly, I wish to turn to Frankfurt's uh, uh, opinion on the relation. And then thirdly, in the third part, I want to compare it with recur's idea of the relation between love and responsibility. And the purpose of my paper is to, to indicate a problem that arises in this comparison, and then uh, I hope to think a little bit further with Frankfurt and Ricoeur on the issue of love and moral responsibility. So let me begin with the first part of my paper. There is not an explicit relation between um, Frankfurt and Ricoeur in the sense that, that they would refer to each other in their texts on love and responsibility. Um, there is not really a dialogue, in other words, between Frankfurt and Ricoeur, in the sense that there is a dialogue uh, between Ricoeur and Nussbaum, for example. Um, we know, of course, and that is the reason why we are here uh, at this conference, that Ricoeur, um, at several occasions, goes into discussion with analytical philosophy and is inspired a great deal by analytical philosophy. And this is both with regard to his notion of love as with regard to his notion of responsibility. But Frankfurt is not part of this particular um, tradition uh, to which Ricoeur reacts. With regard to his concept of love, in his essay, perhaps most famous essay on love, Love and Justice, Ricoeur criticizes the analytical conceptualization of love, and he has, but in particular, he discusses the theological tradition like such, um, to which such thinkers as Jean Utka belong, who aim to derive a normative standard of justice from the principle of love in the sense of agape, from love of neighbor, um, a principle like love your neighbors equally. Frankfurt is not part of this tradition of theologians, in fact, as I will argue in the following, it is not Frankfurt's intention to isolate a normative concept um, uh, of justice um, from love, but rather the other way around, to argue that the principles of morality, the normative principles of morality, are different from those of love, radically different. This is an exclusion. Secondly, with regard to the uh, recurse concept of responsibility, there is also a link between the analytical philosophy and recur, but which is not a link between recur and Frankfurt. Um, in his book on moral responsibility, or in oneself as another, in which the question in his little ethics is raised about the, uh, the question about moral responsibility, um, who is the subject of moral imputation, um, we know that this book is written in the context of 
the discussion of personal identity, which is a discussion with analytical philosophy. But again, Frankfurt is not part in this book of uh, uh, the, the tradition to which we react. Nevertheless, I think there is a good reason to compare Frankfurt and Ricoeur, and this has to do with their opposite opinions about the relation between love in the sense of personal care and responsibility. As for Frankfurt, this is a relation of exclusion, as he puts it, and I quote Frankfurt, there is no distinctive type or category of moral responsibility that is particularly grounded in or derivative from love, end of quote. And in another text he says, quote, the function of love is not to make people good, end of quote. Ricard, on the other hand, sees a relation between love and moral responsibility. In fact, we know that Ricard does not have one single concept of love. He identifies different kinds of relationships as loving relationships, going from the erotic to that of solicitude in the discussion of, of friendship in oneself as another, to that of love of neighbor in love and justice and the neighbor and associates, for instance. And it is a particular with regard to, his, to, to these two last concepts, the one of love of neighbor and of solicitude, that he sees a link with responsibility. With regard to the concept of love of neighbor, as the, the title of his essay, Love and Justice, already suggests, there is a relation between love and justice. And it is this relation of which Ricoeur says that, I quote, it gives rise to responsible forms of behavior, end of quote. As with regard to his concept of solicitude, it is introduced in his little ethics in oneself as another, in which uh, the question of moral responsibility is raised. So there is also a link. So I think it is clear that a comparison between Frankfurt and Ricard is a comparison between two opposed views and this raises the question how love, in the sense of care, is related to moral responsibility. So that's for the, the context of the, the question I wish to raise. So I now turn to Frankfurt's account uh, on love in the second part of my paper. Um, this is a paradoxical account on love, and this is a, a word that Frankfurt uses himself. On the one hand, love is a way of caring disinterestedly, according to Frankfurt. I quote, a disinterested concern for the existence of the beloved, end of quote, or in another text, quote, a practical concern for what is good for the beloved, end of quote. So it is a practical disinterest, love in the sense of a practical disinterested concern. At the same time, Love is always motivated by self-interest for Frankfurt, so hence the paradox. I quote for um, Frankfurt, quote, for the lover, self-interest and selflessness coincide, end of quote. So this self-interest means for Frankfurt, more particular, that love does not amount to finding some inherent value into the beloved, but rather the other way around, that in the loving relationships, according to Frankfurt, we project value onto the love itself, onto the practical concern we have for the lover. I quote Frankfurt again. As I'm construing it, love is not necessarily a response grounded in awareness of the inherent value of its object. End of quote. And again, quote, the truly essential relation between love and the value of the beloved goes in the opposite direction. It is not necessarily as a result of recognizing their value and of being captived by it that we love things. Rather, what we love acquires value for us because we love it, end of quote. So the arg Frankfurt's argument for, for this statement that love is uh, necessarily self-interest uh, and disinterestedness at the same time is that we may well love things that have no value at all, no inherent value at all. And that, as so Frankfurt argues, maybe are inherently evil. And on the other hand, we may recognize the inherent value of things without loving them, like, say, the moral law. 
So love for Frankfurt is a practical concern, but it is not so much a practical concern that is motivated by recognizing the inherent value of the object for which one is concerned, but rather the other way around, a practical concern, because this caring itself, this concern, is personally valuable for oneself, because this is enjoyable. Frankfurt also speaks of the instrumental value of love. It is instrumental, of course, not in the sense that it would be an instrument to gain something else, but something else than the love itself, but it is instrumental in that the love itself in Frankfurt is, according to Frankfurt, is an instrument to gain personal value. So it follows from this, from this account of love that love itself does not have an ethical meaning for Frankfurt and that it therefore excludes moral responsibility. In fact, for love for Frankfurt is not charity. He distinguishes love from charity or as he puts it, quote, a concern for others that is entirely disinterested, end of quote. The reason for this, according to Frankfurt, is that charity, helping sick and the poor, um, is an impersonal relationship because the sick and the poor might, might be people that I don't know. And that love implies a personal relationship. Like, for instance, give the example of parental love. Moreover, Frankfurt's texts on moral responsibility do not deal with the concept of love and vice versa. His texts on love do not deal with the concept of moral responsibility. Moral responsibility is a question of free will for Frankfurt. Um, and the principles of morality, according to Frankfurt, are uh, conceptualized as different from the principles of love, which are concerned, the principles of morality are concerned with the common interest or, as Frankfurt puts it, quote, with how our actions should take into account the needs, the desires, and the entitlements of others, end of quotes, while love is a relationship of personal interest. So, to be sure, according to Frankfurt, love in the sense of practical concern it is possible, of course, for Frankfurt, as he says it, that we can love our moral principles in the sense that we can love the common interest. And there is an implicit connection between love and responsibility in the sense that love is a way, according to Frankfurt, for a person to identify him, himself or herself with his own actions, and in that sense is an accountable person. Uh, so there is a link between responsibility. But to be sure, there is a fundamental difference between love, which is a relationship of self-interest, and morality, moral responsibility, which is a relation of which aims at the common interest. Um, now I, I come to my uh, third part of my paper, which I want to make a connection between Frankfurt's notion of love and that of recur. Now, Ricoeur also has a notion of love in the sense of a personal relationship, uh, which is different from a, rela a moral re relationship. In The Neighbor and the Socius, we, we read that the relationship with the neighbor, which is the relationship of love of neighbor, according to Ricoeur, differs from what he calls the relationship with the Socius, which is, a, with a, which is the relation with the anonymous other on the level of institutions. For example, he also gives the example of parental love, which illustrates the difference according to him. Um, in I do not love every child as my own, he says. This is the, the, this is the example of parental love is an example of, of an exclusive relationship, and this is an example of love of neighbor. Nevertheless, this does not exclude that I also have responsibility towards other child as well. So I quote Ricoeur, the first love, and he is talking about uh, parental love, love of neighbor, is intimate and subjective, albeit exclusive. The second, is, and he is talking about responsibility, is abstract but has a wider scope. I am not discharged of all responsibility to children by simply loving my own. 
But here, the quote also suggests, although there is a difference between love and responsibility, that there is also a close connection between them. In a sense, responsibility is a kind of love. Therefore, it talks about the first love, which is personal, love of neighbor, and the second love, which he identifies with responsibility. The, re the relation between love and responsibility becomes more clear, I think, when we take into account uh, Ricoeur's texts, his essay on love, love and justice, in which he ele elaborates on what he calls a dialectical, hermeneutical relation between moral principles of justice, which he identifies as the golden rule, and uh, love. And it is this relation of which he says that it gave, can give rise to responsible forms of behavior. So what, how can we understand this relation? It is, um, we can understand it, I think, at the backdrop of the economy, what he call, calls the economy of the gift, which um, he defines as follows, quote, since life has been given to you, give, end of quote. So the idea is quite simple. Um, it is because we can realize that life is a gift, that our life, is, life as such is valuable. We are capable of valuing the life of another um, and of um, caring for others in the sense of, 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 of charity, of love, of neighbor. I think this idea shows, and I'm coming to my point now, that love in the sense of personal care is not necessarily the same as projecting personal value onto such care as Frankfurt claims it is. That is, the idea shows that people are capable of care not only because they find it particularly enjoyable to engage in such care, but rather the other way around, because they are capable of discovering the inherent value of the life of another through the recognition of the gift of life. In other words, love is still a personal relationship, and I think Frankfurt has a point here, that in the sense that it is a relationship with my neighbor, um, and, and in that sense an exclusive relationship. But at the same time, it is not an economic exchange of self-interest, of personal value. I care for your life only because I get something in return, personal value. And this can become clear, I think, yeah, when we take into account the difference Ricoeur makes between love and the golden rule, the moral principles, principle of justice, which is the principle do to others just as you wish they would do to you. Um, this is a, a mutual exchange for Ricoeur. Um, it is different from love, um, but at the same time there is a dialectical relation between the principle of justice and love in the sense that it can be translated, uh, the one principle can be translated into the other, the, 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 principle, the equal principle of justice can be translated into the principle of love, which is, opens the uh, generosity. So do to others just as you wish, they do in return, and uh, can be translated in the, the principle of love, which Ricoeur uh, identifies with the economy of the gift. Since uh, life has been given to you, give to the other. So the difference is in the sins. Um, uh, the, the, the sins opens the idea of a generosity. I already received something, so I am able to give something to the other without expecting something in return. It is this generosity that Frankfurt does not take into account in his concept of love. He does not explain, in other words, why we are capable of caring, of giving something to our neighbors, of those uh, we love, without expecting something in return. Frankfurt makes abstraction, in other words, of the ethical significance of love. Charity is itself a kind of love, so it appears in the sense that we are capable of generous caring about the well-being of another. Um, 
um, which is not necessarily well caring for this well-being for, res uh, for, the, for the reason that I um, uh, want to receive personal value for it in return. However, Ricard's notion of charity, as it is, as he introduces this, it in Love and Justice, is an extreme form of love of neighbor, um, which he, um, and he refers to the Sermon of the Plain, and, and it is a love of your enemies. Um, <clears throat> so the question arises whether this kind of love is still love. Does Frankfurt have a point that um, in the sense that love uh, in this extreme form and recur, refers to such, uh, such figures as Gandhi, Martin Luther King and St. Francis, that this love is reserved for an exceptional few. This generosity is an extreme generosity, which is uh, not so much that of um, uh, with the, the generosity we find in our personal relations of love, uh, which we have with our neighbors and our friends. Nevertheless, I think Ricoeur still has a point in, in uh, pointing out that love in the sense of personal care does have an ethical significance and that in this sense it is related to moral responsibility. And I think, um, and I want to show this in the remaining part of my presentation, to, in referring to his notion of solicitude. In fact, I think there is a connection between uh, what Ricoeur calls love of neighbor and uh, solicitude. At least this is suggested by Ricoeur, although it is not, uh, he does not elaborate on this relation explicitly. In Love and Justice we read that the gift of life, which was um, uh, the, the principle by which we underst can understand what we call calls love of neighbor, I quote, situates man in the middle of nature itself considered as an object of solicitude, respect, and admiration. So here is a, a relation, um, uh, an implicit relation suggested at least by Ricoeur between solicitude and love of labor. And in oneself as another also, he calls solicitude a benevolent spontaneity, which he calls a charity. So here also there is a relation between solicitude and love of labor suggested. So what is then the relation, I think. I think the relation is, uh, I wish to show, is that it, there is a difference between them, but that, it is, that they have a, a similar structure, and that therefore um, they both have an, a similar ethical significance which relates them close to moral responsibility. And the difference consists of the fact that love of neighbor is, as Ricoeur identifies it, an extreme form of charity, while solicitude it remains on the, on the level of um, uh, close to friendship, on the level of sympathy among friends. So I think there are four points of similarity between charity and love of, uh, charity, and, uh, love of neighbor and solicitude, sorry. Um, the first one is that solicitude is also a care for well-being of another. Unlike love of neighbor, though, it is not understood by Ricoeur at the backdrop of what he calls the gift of life. The context is uh, quite different. It is that of true sympathy, of sharing the feelings and the suffering of others. Um, as Ricoeur puts it, I quote, in true sympathy, the self finds itself affected. For it is indeed feelings that are revealed in the self by the other suffering, feelings spontaneously directed towards others. This intimate unit between the ethical aim of solicitude and the affective flesh of feelings seems to me to justify the choice of the term solicitude. In other words, solicitude is a kind of compassion, according to Ricard, in the sense that we care for the well-being um, of another in being worried about the suffering of others. And this worry itself is the compassion, is, is to an extent, Ricoeur says, suffering ourselves. In, this, in suffering about the suffering of another, we are anxious about the suffering. We want the suffering to stop. And in that sense, one already cares in compassion for the suffering of another. So there's 
That's one similarity. A second similarity between solicitude and love of neighbor is that it is also a mutual relationship. Uh, they are both mutual relationship. For, uh, as for solicitude, and this is also the difference with love of neighbor, the mutuality is close to that of Aristotle's notion of friendship, which is a mutual relationship. Although it is not um, exactly the same, because the rela in Aristotle's relation of friendship, so Ricard tells us, is still close to philautia, the a notion of self-love, which amounts to finding self-interest or pleasure in, uh, okay. um, in, the, in caring, in being with friends for the pleasure it gives. So I think this notion of philautia is closer to Frankfurt's notion of uh, of love than it is to because notion of solicitude. Solicitude is mutual then in exactly in this compassion, in the sh sharing of feelings of, of another, in the sharing of, uh, and this, it is an exchange of sympathy. Uh, thirdly, solicitude is also a personal relationship in that it is related to self-esteem. And it is different because um, this notion of self-esteem is not related to the concept of love of neighbor as such. But it is through this compassion that we can we are able, according to Ricard, to esteem others as another's life as valuable in the sense that in being worried about the suffering of another in compassion, we in a sense desire the suffering to end. We desire that the the other um, is as a life free from suffering or a, a life uh, in with self-esteem, which is capable of acting. Okay, so I think to uh, I'm going to conclude. Um, there is still I still have um, yeah. The, so three similarities, um, and I think um, that before I go to the fourth similarity, I think this notion of solicitude in the sense of sympathy also shows that. Um, a love and this on the level of sympathy among friends is not simply projecting necessarily projecting personal value onto caring for um, one's friends in the sense that it is exactly the recognition of the inherent um, inherent value of or the, of the well-being of another it more than being an exchange of personal value, it is an exchange in suffering and an exchange of self-esteem, which is something, something uh, different. So difference is is one between, except uh, one between projecting value uh, onto caring for our friends, um, and one of recognizing the value of our uh, friend's life, free from suffering, to um, in uh, compassion, and uh, th th and there's also a fourth similarity with love of neighbor, and that is that it's therefore uh, close to uh, moral responsibility because of this ethical intention of benevolent spontaneity that that is inherent to to solicitude. Um, it is as Ricard puts it in the subset on moral responsibility in oneself as another. It can also be translated. In, by transition of the golden rule into a moral principle, which he identifies as the principle, you shall not kill or you shall not let other people suffer. So it is, again, a dialectical relation between love and a moral principle um, in the sense that the, uh, the ethical benevolence of caring for the suffering of another can be translated in the negative prohibition, moral prohibition, you, can, you shall not uh, let people suffer. So that's the the link with moral uh, responsibility. So I conclude now. So in I think both Ricard's concept of love of neighbor and that of solicitude both demonstrate that love in the sense of personal care does not necessarily overlap with finding personal value into this care. And it is, this shows that this is not only the case in extreme forms of charity, which we find in 
love of neighbor, but also um, in sympathy among friends, which we find in solitude. Therefore, I think both concepts show that love already has an ethical intention, and therefore in the sense that it is a recognition of the, the well-being of another, um, and therefore that it is not simply a matter of taking these two concepts and conceptualizing them as different concepts, but that the relation is in fact a dialectical one, hermeneutical one, in the sense that there is a difference between love and moral responsibility, of course, but that there is also a connection in the sense that the benevolent spontaneity of love or the ethical uh, directness of love can be translated into a negative moral principle, a prohibition or a pre moral prescription. And that is how it is related to moral responsibility. Thank you. Well, thank you, Jeffrey. You, um, we have the, uh, the gift of, of, Je of Jeffrey having convened a, a conversation um, with uh, a, a partner that never happened. Uh, I think it was very thought-provoking and uh, elucidated a lot of the key ideas. Let's uh, open up for a few questions here. Uh, and there's also a lot of resonance, I think, with uh, uh, Professor Caputo's uh, paper as well. So we, any, any cross-engagement that we'd like to do as well. Yeah. yeah, thank you for your suggestion. Perhaps that's a good, uh, that would be a good starting point to make the difference between Frankfurt and Ricoeur because, of course, there is um, this, and that is why I think Ricoeur uh, has a point because he, Frankfurt, Frankfurt has a simple one, simple concept of, of love, but, but, but in Ricoeur there is um, immediately uh, this reference to Aristotle. Uh, and the the, the um, how do you say the he is immediately um, sensitive for the different different uh, significance and the different intentions of love and there is there is a difference indeed between ethical love and and selfish love that is so thank you I will keep that in mind thank you for your suggestion. Do we have another question for Jeffrey? Oh, sorry. Uh, it's a very important project about the non-binary responsibility. Uh, uh, as you all have talked about, uh, in some times, uh, love is a uh, kind of gas uh, uh, But in reality, how to, how to solve the problem between the, uh, the problem between the, the tension and the contradiction between the love and the justice because it is uh, uh, the type the type uh, you see it's uh, a lot of it's a lot of uh, there, there are a lot of uh, types of different 
Mm-hmm. Yes, I think according according to Ricoeur, in in love and justice, it, the main difference is one of between equality. Justice is a relation between equals of giving something to another and getting something equally in return. While the 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 essence of of uh, of love in that text is one of uh, generosity um, of being able to give someone uh, I love something without necessarily expecting something in return like in an uh, instrumental relation of economical exchange but nevertheless there is a, a there is a, a dialectical relation and as you know dialectics is essentially about bringing diff- two different concepts, reuniting two different concepts together. So it is, um, the, 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 the relation between them is that um, it is possible to translate one, the one, in, the one concept into the other in the sense that um, uh, the principle to, to, others, to, to get something in return um, can be translated in a principle of uh, since something has been given to you, do something in return. So there is, there is, a, there is a, a singularity, but at the same time, there is a difference. Was that an answer to your question? <laughs>